Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community. Brothers and sisters online, we're so glad to welcome all of you to the service tonight, guys. Get ready, we're going to have an exciting adventure in the word of His grace. We also want to welcome the Akwai State community connected to this service by way of Comfort FM, XL FM Radio, Akwai Those of you connected by way of Passion FM, Inspiration FM, and Heritage FM, we're so glad to welcome all of you to the service, guys. Grab your Bibles. It's going to be exciting. Call a friend, a loved one, a family member, a neighbor by you. Ask them to come around. Let's get in the Word. It's going to be a great time of studying the Word tonight. I also want to ask the social media community to help us get the word around the world. Put the message on as many groups as possible all over the world. Let's flood the earth with the fragrance of Jesus, his grace. I also want to welcome all our campuses around the world that are connected to the service. Brothers and sisters in various campuses, we love you. We're glad you're here tonight. It's going to be a wonderful time as we look into the truth of God's word. Is anybody in the building excited to be in the house tonight? Can we celebrate God's word with a shout? Glory! Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace tonight. <clears throat> Glory to God. All right, grab your phones. You share the videos on your various platforms and put them all over the place. Let's get this word around the world. Turn your Bibles tonight to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. So we've been examining the Pauline theology. We've been looking at Brother Paul's revelation of identification. And we've been looking at that signature in Christ. Now Paul made mention of this Sophia. The wisdom that was given unto him that he has used in writing unto you. That's Sophia. That's insight. That wisdom. Brother Paul talked about it in Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 1. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Next verse. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to you, what the word dispensation there means, stewardship. Next verse. The, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words. Next verse. Whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So he said there is a knowledge that was granted him in the mystery of Christ. Paul is very graph, you know, graphically figurative in how he uses that word there. He says it's by the spirit of God. But when he was saying that he was already in prison. He was writing from prison. What a way to describe something. That is, I am bound by the spirit, not of my own volition. Now, pay attention. He recognizes that wisdom that is given unto him. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he admonishes Timothy, and that from a child thou was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So you are wise unto salvation. The same word, Sophia. Now again, Paul, knowing you know, that he is speaking to Timothy, makes a little bit of acknowledging of Timothy's wisdom, same thing with him in the subject of salvation. Now let's make some distinction here. The four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, were basically for the unsaved. They were letters written for the unsaved. 
So it will carry a lot of persuasion because it's, it's evangel, a letter written to the unsaved. And it speaks of believing a whole lot. And if you observe, Jesus' audience consisted of those to be saved. And it was specifically Jewish people, you know, mostly. Paul, on the other hand, had largely a Gentile community. And of course, there were Jews there as well, but largely Gentiles. Because of most of the cities where brother Paul did ministry work. So his writings, therefore, were to the believing ones. You must always know the distinction between letters written to believers and letters written to the unsaved. But the teachings were to no disparity whatsoever. They were the same things that were being taught. But the emphasis will be different. The teachings will be the same, but the emphasis will be different in the writings. Now, the teachings, like I said, will be the same because of the audience. So there will be difference of emphasis. For example, the tenses will change. The tenses will change. But there's something I want us to notice. Look at John chapter 16 verse 12. John chapter 16 verse number 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. Now look at a vital information in verse 13. <clears throat> How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The spirit of Aletia, Numa Aletia. By now you know how to spell Aletia, right? And you know how to spell Numa. So that means there were many things Jesus did not say. And it doesn't mean they contradicted anything he said. I have told you, it's a weak argument to say Jesus was speaking under the law. You know, you need to find out if he was speaking under the law, what did he say? There is enough clarity now in the epistles for you to know what he was saying. It's not even clarity. Now that you have faith in Christ, now that you have faith in the gospel, it's easy for you to pick the words of Jesus and understand what Jesus was saying. So, the spirit of truth, therefore, will be the pneuma, the pneuma of Paul's letters. The spirit of truth will be the pneuma of Paul's letters, indwelling and outworking in conduct, indwelling, outworking in conduct, in ministry, and also the way information is received by us. I go over it again. The pneuma of, that is the spirit of truth will be the pneuma of Paul's letters. Indwelling and outworking in conduct, in ministry, and also the way information is received by us. Spiritual or things of the spirit. And that is Brother Paul's apodexis. Brother Paul's apodexis. Jesus' pneuma aletia. And you will see the use of the word apodexis in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Apodexis. Now, so, a heavy word, which means you must be careful. You must be very discreet. You must be wise in how you quote Paul. You must be wise. Because Paul needs to be read with a lot of understanding. And his use of words. His use of words. And that's the reason why I deliberately and purposely let us examine yesterday the word redeemed. So that we will understand what it means to pay for. What he was paying for. And who was paying for what? what he was paying for, who he was paying for, and who he was paying for what. Because it helps our level of understanding of the insight of Brother Paul. Look at a key word in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. 2 Timothy 3, 15. 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. If you observe at the beginning I told you to keep that somewhere we're going to do some work on pistis. Faith which is in Christ Jesus. That is through pistis in the Christos. Through pistis. Pistis is spelled as P-I-S-T-I-S. Through pistis in the Christos. This again is a heavy word in Paul's letters. Knowing what it means or what it should mean, it's very critical because it's a heavy word. There is a verb to that word which is probably the one we are accustomed to. And that verb is the word pisteo. P-I-S-T-E-U-O. Pisteo, the verb for pistis. To believe. Pisteo, to believe. Now, I will skip the immediate details for a reason. But notice that the word faith is used in Paul's letters about 65 times. Faith. Then there's another word he uses as a noun. Is the word apistio. Apistio. A-P-I-S-T-E-U-O. Apistio. So we have seen pistis, we have seen pistio, we are now seeing apistio. That's a bit of a word and we have to look at it because that word is a bit negative, apistio. Now that word is a noun that brother Paul himself used, apistio. Romans chapter 3 verse 3, pay attention. Romans chapter 3 verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? What if some don't believe? Shall their unbelief, underline that word, shall their unbelief, that's a negative word, apistio. You will see the use of that word again in Mark chapter 16 verse 16. Mark Chapter 16, verse number 16. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth not shall be damned. He that believes not is a noun. Those that believe not. Like he is talking about a class of people. Then interestingly, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 13, look at what Paul is saying there, 2 Timothy 2 13, put it up for me, 2 Timothy 2 13, if we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. So notice that. We have another word, apistos. Apistos. A-P-I-S-T-O-S. We've seen apistio. Now we're looking at apistos. This time around, it's an adjective. It describes a noun. Apistos. So it describes what we are saying now. Jesus used this for his own disciples. In Matthew chapter 17, verse number 17. Please pay attention. This is very important foundation. Matthew 17, 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. He calls his disciples faithless. He calls his own disciples faithless. The same in Mark 9.19. You can read at home. Mark 9.19. And Luke chapter 9 verse 4. Mark 9.19. Luke 9.4. And Luke 12.46. Luke 12.46. For further study at home. <clears throat> Please pay attention. The unbelievers. Unbelievers. And interestingly is an adjective. Now in John chapter 20, Jesus used this term for Thomas. 
John 20, 27. John, put it up for me, chapter 20, verse 27. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Be not faithless, but believing. Then in First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6, First Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 6, but brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers, before the unbelievers. What Paul is saying is, how will you take a brother to an unbeliever to report him? Now that's a continual word. Now take note of this other scripture for study at home. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 12, verse 13, 14, and 15. First Corinthians 7, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Notice that. And it's about marital relationship between those who are married and the unmarried. And there he talked about the unbelieving. Now what is curious is that Jesus used that word for his disciples. And Paul used it in that scripture. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unbelieving, he cannot deny himself. He abides faithful. He uses that for Timothy. So that should get you thinking. He uses that for Timothy. Now, in 1 Corinthians 7, 12, where I gave you to write down and study, he talked about marital relationship. In 1 Corinthians 10, 27, if the unbelieving, if the unbelieving should invite you to a feast, like Salah celebration, a feast, you know Salah? Okay? That you should come and eat. Them that believe not. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 22 to 24. You can write it down for study. Paul talking in Corinth. How if the unsaved should come into the assembly. The unsaved. That describes a person. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. A lot of scriptures but that's Bible study. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. He talks about the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. That believe not. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. The believer with an unbeliever. Verse 15. The infidel with the believing one. The infidel with the believing one. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. He that does not take care of his own... He has denied the faith. And he said such a person is worse than an infidel. Wow. Then take note of this one. Titus 1, 5. And Revelation 21 verse 8. Titus 1, 15, sorry. And Revelation 21 verse 8. Another word that is negative also is the word... Apeito, Apeito, A P E I T H O, Apeito, A P E I T H O. Somebody say, hey, Dr. Damina doesn't know how to pronounce it. Eh? You take the pronouncement, leave me with the spelling. That's why I'm spelling. So if I don't pronounce well, you'd have the gift of pronouncement, pronounce it well. The important thing is, I gave you the spelling. Now, obey, obey, that word there, apeto, sounds like disobedience. It sounds like disobedience. Obey really means to hear something. To obey, to hear something or to give attention to something. To hear something or to give attention to something. To obey. That is, you actually listen to it and you gave your hearing to it. The opposite will be disobedience. The opposite of obedience will be disobedience. Look at John 3.36. Put it up for me. 
John chapter 3 verse 36. The gospel of John. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. He that believeth not. The wrath of God is upon those that disobey. Those that will not listen to Christ. Those that will not listen to the gospel. It's not that they are not hearing. They are hearing the message, but they are not taking the message seriously. They are hearing the message, but they are not taking the message seriously. However, the unbelieving means the facts have come to you and you have chosen not to accept it. The facts have been presented to you and you have chosen not to accept it. That makes you an unbeliever. Or it also presupposes actions that are taken. Actions that are taken. However, in this instance, they are actually the same. It's just that the way they are used is different. Now, in Acts chapter 14, verse 2, and Acts chapter 19, verse 9. Acts chapter 14, verse 2, and Acts chapter 19, verse 9. It is used for those who rebelled and opposed Paul. It is used for those who rebelled and opposed Paul. Then in Romans chapter 2, verse 8, and in Romans chapter 10, verse 21, Romans 2 8, Romans 10 21, Romans 11 30 and 31. It's used for disobedience, the disobedient. Then in Romans chapter 15, verse 31, Romans 15 31, them that believe not the word, them that believe not the world is actually disobedience note this one this is important hebrews 3 18 put it up for me i want to read that one hebrews chapter 3 verse 18 and to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not very vital those that did not enter rest those that believe not those that did not obey. Hebrews 11.31, write down. Hebrews 11.31, you, you will get why I'm going through this holistic foundation on pistis in a moment. In a moment. And it will reset a lot of things in your thinking. That's why I'm taking the time. And you know that when I take time like this, is because I want to deal with a major issue that has to do with a mindset. All right? Okay, so now Hebrews 11:31, 1 Peter 2 8. It talks about them that obey not. Them that obey not. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Again, he talked about the unsaved husband who did not obey the word. In 1 Peter 3 1. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. Now, why did we go into all that? It's because of the importance of two words in Paul's letters. If you observe, I started by telling you that when dealing with Paul's verbiage, there is, you know, there's there's cause for carefulness and patience. The word faith and the word obey. The word faith and the word obey. So, he always had those who obeyed and those who did not obey. Now, the word believe, believe, has 85 usages. 85 usages. Also, in the epistles the word believe so now let's see how that word 
pistis. It's a tricky word. Pistis. It's one of those words in Paul's letters that you must look closely at what he is saying. For example, Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Put it up. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Now, obedience to the faith, pistis, among all nations for his name. It brings in everything he calls the gospel. Because if you observed, look at the pretext before he arrived at verse 5. Verse 2 and 4 of Romans 1. Put it up for me. Which he had promised, talking about the gospel, are for by his prophets in the holy scriptures. Next verse. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit. You didn't give me verse 3. You went to verse 4. I said next verse. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of a holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So now he, he brings in everything he calls the gospel, which is incarnation and resurrection, and he calls it the faith. By whom, look at that verse 5, by whom, Romans 1, 5, we have received grace, and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations. That is our apostleship and grace is to bring men to the obedience of the faith among all nations. Actually, it's the same. It's just that the way they are used, you know, has to be examined. Now pay attention here. Obedience to the faith. Whereas these two words should not be in the same sentence. Obedience to the faith. If you are in the faith, you have obeyed. Okay? Obedience to the faith. So, if both will come from me, if obedience and faith will come from me, or it will come from his audience as it were. However, what he was describing from verse 2 to 4 are the actions of Christ. Verse 2 to 4 are for the gospel by his prophets. Okay? Then verse 3, incarnation, verse 4, Declared to be the son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. Are you following? Now, he calls that the faith. And our response. He calls your response obedience. He calls the actions of Christ the faith. He calls your response obedience. So look at Romans 3.22. Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Please pay attention, I beg you. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Unto all. And upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. The word pistis is like a shipload. A shipload where you have different cargoes in the ship. One ship, many cargoes. It has different meanings that can be used by the same person. 
it will mean two different things and it is the same word. The same word, two different things. Many cargoes in one ship. It's one of those tricky words used by Paul. Look at that Romans 3.21. Let me read 21 then 22. Romans 3.21 But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Underlined by the law and the prophets. Next verse now. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Now that's a shipload there. Let me give you the way it is in the Greek. Pistios, isio, ehis, pas, hod, pistio. If you want to spell, I can give you to spell for free. P i s t e u s, pistios. A-C-O means Jesus. I-E-S-O-U. I-E-S-O-U. That's Jesus. A-C-O. Then A-H-E-S. A-H-E-S means to what? E-H-I-S. A-H-E-S. Don't join them together. They're different words. Then P-A-S. Pass. It means all. Then H O D. It means who. Then P I S T E U O. It means believe in. Pistios eos isio a his pass hold pistio. So that means. He uses pistio here for faithfulness. Faithfulness. Jesus is faithfulness. Pistio. Jesus is faithfulness. So the word pistis can be faith. But he says his faithfulness toward us. Jesus' faithfulness toward us is what brought about our faithfulness towards him. Jesus' faithfulness toward us is what brought about our faithfulness towards him. That's a tricky word because his faithfulness there will be Faithfulness to what? Faithfulness to what? He said what he is faithful to. In verse 21. Faithful to the law and the prophets. His faithfulness to the law and the prophets. So, he is faithful to the law and the prophets that we be faithful in the sense of believing in what he has done. So faithful Jesus, faithful me. Too faithful in the same verse, yet the usage is different. Now look at Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Matthew 22, 36 to 40. Put it up for me. Master, which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 40. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. So, what is a summary of the law and the prophets? Love the Lord with everything you have and love your neighbor. 
Alright? So Jesus is faithful to the law and the prophets. So he must demonstrate that faithfulness to love. Jesus must demonstrate that faithfulness to love. What love? Love towards God, which is love towards all men. Love towards God, which is love towards all men. He demonstrates it. How did he demonstrate it? Matthew 5, 17. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Was he faithful to that? Huh? Did he fulfill the law and the prophets? Yes. Because the law and the prophets hung on what he did on our behalf. So Paul is saying this act of Jesus is witnessed by the law and the prophets. His faithfulness is what produced our believing. If he wasn't faithful, what will you believe? You believe because he was faithful. Same root word, but different application. His faithfulness, which is his faith, is the basis for our believing. Are you in the building? The faithfulness of Jesus is the faithfulness for our believing. And you must carefully look at how brother Paul used it. So, his faithfulness is what now translates to the message we preach. And that is why the message we preach is called faith. The word of faith which we preach. Why? Why? Because the word of faith which we preach is based on the faithfulness of Jesus to the law and the prophets. And based on that, we can now believe on his own faithfulness. I wouldn't have believed if Jesus was not faithful. So his faithfulness which is his faith? Look at Romans 3, 23 to 24. Please pay attention. Romans 3, 23 to 24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Next verse. Being justified freely by his grace. How? Through the redemption that is where? In Christ Jesus. That is his faith. We are justified freely. How? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is his faith. Look at verse 25 now. Put it up. Romans 3.25 Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Let me ask you a question and see whether you're really following or you need to speak in tongues a bit. Put it up again. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Question. Whose faith is there? Huh? Huh? Jesus' is faith. Okay? Is the propitiation our believing or his faithfulness? Correct. So, it's his faithfulness. Now, put that verse 25 and pay attention now. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood 
to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Through the forbearance of God. Take note of three words in that verse. His faithfulness, his blood, his righteousness. Three words in that one verse. His faithfulness, it's his blood, it's his righteousness. Then look at verse 26 of Romans chapter 3 now. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. That he might be just and the justifier. Oh, oh. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Question. Whose righteousness to declare at this time whose Jesus' is righteousness. Great, you're following. So now he becomes the just and the justified. That is what he's saying is that Jesus will take action for me and the action will be seen in the eyes of justice that he didn't carry out a criminal operation. It was a just action. He didn't overlook and say, okay, you have seen it. Eh? No problem. I am God. It doesn't matter. Come. Uh -uh. He took action in justifying me that by his action, he is just. And based on his being just, he qualifies to justify. Am I teaching good here? As always say, is there, you know, uh, all this grace is licensed to sin. They don't know any. What God did, God operated within the confines of justice. He didn't say, because I'm, I am God, let's just claim. Okay, you see, eh? don't worry, I am God. I'm, 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 after all, I'm God. Nobody can question me. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh -uh. God became a man. And went through the rudiments that anybody will have gone through to be justified. And after meeting the demands of justice, he now is able to justify. Am I teaching? Now, stay with me. That he might be just and justifier of him that believe in Jesus. Can we say that he that believes in the faith of Jesus. Huh? He that believes in what? Okay, good. Tricky word by Paul. So you must read words in context. Look at verse 27 of that same Romans chapter 3. Verse 27 now. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, he. Nay. But by the law of faith. What is the law of faith? Is it the law of believing or the law of his faithfulness? Huh? His faithfulness. The same thing he calls the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. In Romans 8.2. That same law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is the law of faith. Same thing. In brother Paul's insight. That's his faithfulness to the law of Moses. Jesus' faithfulness to the law and the prophets. That is the law of faith he is talking about. The principle of Christ's faithfulness. Now look at verse 28. Romans 3, 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Uh, why is a man now justified by faith without the deeds of the law? Because of Jesus' faithfulness to who? The law and the prophets. If it's getting clear, shout, I hear you. Now, 
let's move a little more. So the faith in verse 28 will now be what? His faithfulness or the believer's faithfulness. Huh? Huh? Wait to verse 28. And let me tell you ahead of time, I will not give you the answer. So you better, you better know it. Therefore, we conclude, based on all of these presentations we have made, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So the question is, whose faith? His faithfulness or the believer's faithfulness? His own? Okay, keep it somewhere. I won't give you the answer now. Then look at verse 29 and verse 31 of the same chapter. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Verse 31. 31. Do we then make void the Lord through faith, God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Huh. Question. How do we establish the law? By the faithfulness of Jesus. Are you in the building? By the faithfulness of Jesus. It's what he has done. What Jesus has done is called faithfulness. The action of Jesus toward us is called faith. So you must look closely at how Paul uses these words. Let's see another place. So when we say salvation through faith in Christ. Huh? Huh? Is it believing faith or the work of Jesus? Eh? Now you're playing Polish. <laughs> I will not give you this answer too, so you better know it. So when we say salvation through faith in Christ, is it believing faith or the work of Jesus? You said so. Okay, keep it somewhere. Philippians 3.9 Philippians 3.9 I'm be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith Satobala. The faith of who? Pistio Christio. Or Pistio Christos. The faith of Christ. Pistio Christos. Is it two different kinds of faith or the same one? Huh? What's the first faith? Pistio Christos. Is it faith in Christ or his faithfulness? That's the first one. Then the second one is your own faith in his faithfulness. You wouldn't have had faith if he wasn't faithful. So your faith is generated by his faith. Teaching good? Stay with me. Stay with me. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified. That's the way it is in the original. Not I am crucified. You are not crucified. If you are crucified, you should be on a cross now. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live. Help me. Help me church. I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. 
So, I live by the faith of the Son of God, my faith or his faithfulness. Exactly. Now, that is his faithfulness. So, every time the action is with Christ, it is his faithfulness. Every time the action is with Christ, it is his faithfulness. So, the work of Christ is also called faith. The work of Christ is also called faith. The sacrifice of Jesus and what he is doing in his church today is termed his pistils. His pistil. Obedience to the faith or obedience to what Christ has done. The ongoing work of Christ for us. The ongoing work of Christ for humanity. In what he has done, both on the cross, in his death and resurrection, is also called the pistil, the faithfulness of Christ. He cannot de deny himself. You remember we read that? He cannot deny himself. He abides pistil. He abides faithful. That is, what it means is, his work has been done. He abides faithful means, his faithfulness is already settled. He is not going to be faithful. He, is, he has been faithful already. He abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. You know, when you see Paul use the term, don't forget that the Jesus that died for our sins was a man. So he therefore was exercising faith in what he did. That is why it is called his faithfulness. Romans chapter 12 verse 3. Stay with me. Tonight is chilling with the big boy. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, every man, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, you can see why if you are restless, you cannot do proper Bible study. Is that true? Did you see the way we were coming? As if we were going nowhere. That's how we travel in Bible study. Because you will always have a mindset if you are restless. You always have. And you don't read between the lines in Bible study. You read the lines. Did you hear that? You don't read between the lines in Bible study. You read the lines. The message of the Bible is not between the lines. The message of the Bible is in the lines. So that's why you don't say, are you saying, read what he said. I'm teaching good here. There's no, are you now saying, go and read what he said. We don't read between the lines. We read the lines because the message is direct. Romans 12.1 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That present your body is not talking about your legs. My hands, my toes, my... Eh? My hands, my toes, my knee. No, that's not what it's talking about. Your body means your person. Present your person. He's not talking about my hands, my toes, my knee, my my what now? When I don't know this song. <laughs> so I have turned it upside down. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> my head, my shoulders. Oh, it's not a good Sunday school student. <laughs> Maybe the time they were teaching us I was pursuing biscuit. So I was hearing <laughs> my eyes, my toes. <laughs> ah! 
my head. <laughs> Teach me now. So that next time I will not co commit the same crime. My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. My head, my shoulders, my knee, my toes. They all belong to Jesus. Sunday school, eh? I am in the lost army. Yes, sir. <laughs> I will never. Uh, that's right. <laughs> I will never steal from my mother's pot. Tell lies to daddy. Beat up my younger ones. Will never fight in my neighborhood. I am in the lost army. Okay, wait. <laughs> that kind of lost army is not the type we're raising here. And you know, that thing made children very rebellious. Because they didn't make them sing the song till they do something wrong. Then they'll tell them, kneel down. I say, okay, sing the song. Uh, I will never, in his mind, he said, I will continue. <laughs> Are you still in the building? Now, so when he says, present your bodies, he's talking about your pressing. Your pressing. Then he says, which is your reasonable worship, reasonable service? We will see that later. Look at verse 2 of Romans chapter 12. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Next verse. Then he now says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure. Now I know that there are some people who teach that when you get born again, you have a measure of faith. Then you grow the measure. Are you with me here? You grow the measure. But that point is not what Paul was saying. That's not what Paul meant by the measure. Anything close to that is not even what Paul was saying. If at all, he began by talking about service. Present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. Now look at the background. He has spoken about the faith of Jesus as the service of Jesus. That's the background. The faith of Jesus as the service of Jesus. Is the faith of Jesus the ministry of Jesus? Huh? Is the faith of Jesus the ministry of Jesus? Yes. He gave himself. Huh? Yes. Is that his faith? Yes. Is that his faithfulness to us? What is his faithfulness to us? He gave himself on our behalf. So, if he now says the grace of God, the grace of God is what he gave. Because grace always refers to what he gave. So, in Romans 12, 3, if he says to every man the measure, the word measure is the word metron in the Greek, methron. Then the word dealt there, he has dealt to every man. The word dealt is the word merizo. M-E-R-I-Z-O. Dealt. Merizo. Merizo. He has dealt. Merizo. We can see the use of it in Matthew 12, 25. You can read at home. Matthew 12, 25 to 26. You can read at home. Matthew 6, 41. Matthew 6, 41. But precisely, see how Paul used this word. He used it in 1 Corinthians 1, 13. Put it up for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? Then he also used it in 1 Corinthians 7, 17. You can read at home. 
and 1 Corinthians 7.34. 7, 17, 1 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians 7.34. God has distributed to every man. Now let's bring it home. God has divided to every man the measure, the methron. It's like a ruler where you make a distinction between one and the other, size and height. The measure is a word Brother Paul used in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. He also used that word in Ephesians 4, 7, 13, and 16. Ephesians, Metron, 4, 7, 13, and 16 for ministry. The measure of faith. Then he talks about the body of Christ. So the measure is talking about service. Service. That is, the measure is the service of Christ going on. The service of Christ ongoing. The ministry of Christ from death to resurrection, that is the ongoing work today. So what Christ is doing today is in us. So he now gives to different individuals to carry him in them. You carry Christ. You carry Christ. I carry Christ. And Christ in us is continuing his ministry through us to his body. Did you follow? That's the measure. That means the same measure you have is the same measure you have is the same measure I have and this measure is Christ in us serving his body. Am I teaching good? Yes. So he calls that the measure of his faithfulness. The measure of his service. So faith there in Romans 12, 3 is used for ministry. And how many of you know that the death of Jesus on the cross is ministry? Yeah, it's ministry. He was serving our purpose. His faithfulness. The measure of his faithfulness. The question now will be, why does he use that word here in Romans 12? Because he had used 11 chapters to talk about Jews and salvation of Romans. Then the other two to talk about the sacrifice of Jesus. Then he now says, look, that sacrifice of Jesus has now been shared in ministry. It has been shared among us as gifts to the body. So that every one of us has a part in our work. And in our work, we are serving one another. Remember, Paul's soteriology will always come with what? His ecclesiology. Where you have the ministry gifts, so the faith there will now be ministry related. The measure means there's a measure of ministry given to every believer to supply for the well-being of the body. Take about that. Are you still in the building? Philemon or Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Put it up for me. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Quickly put it on the screen. That the communication of your faith may become effectual. How? By the acknowledging of every good thing. Which is where? In you because you are where? In Christ. In Christ. 
which is in you in Christ. Now, look at verse 3 of Philemon. Philemon chapter 1 verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers. In my prayers. Next verse. Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus that is toward all saints. The love you have for the Lord Jesus demonstrated towards all saints. So hearing of your love which is your faithfulness to Christ. Your love is your faithfulness to Christ. Your love is your faithfulness to Christ's doctrine in your life. Your faithfulness to Christ's doctrine in your life. Which is now toward the saints. Your love which is your faithfulness to the doctrine of Christ, which is toward the saints. So by verse 6, that the communication of your faithfulness, that the communication of that your faithfulness, eh? which faithfulness? Your faithfulness, which is the love of God, in you to others is the communication of your faithfulness which is in your love to others may become effectual. What do we find in Christ? Huh? Faithfulness. What did we find in Christ? Faithfulness. What is the faithfulness of Christ? His death, his sacrifice, what he did for me on the cross, what was his motive, what was his purpose, all of that is his faithfulness. Faithfulness to the law and the prophets. So when we have faith in him, we have faith what? In his faithfulness. Faithfulness to who? Christ's faithfulness to who? To the law. What did the law and the prophets say about Jesus? Huh? Talk to me, Power City. What did the law and the prophets say about Jesus? The sufferings of Christ. So when he came and suffered, what was the suffering of Christ? Faithfulness to the law and the prophets. Am I explaining? Now, stay with me. So, it will now make sense. Galatians 5, 6. Because many people have, have wondered what that verse means. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which walketh by love. It now makes sense. But faith which walketh by love. Because, you know, some people will tell you, well, well, if you are not in love, your faith cannot walk. That's a lame explanation. That's using sense to explain Bible. Using sense. Faith that walketh by love. Which means the Christian living today is the love of God in action. Your Christian living today is the love of God in action. Faith which walketh by love. Because when Paul talks about faith... He gets to verse 6. He now talks about love. That is, his faith is love in action. So, faith in Christian living is love in action. If I have faith as a child of God, it will be seen in my love for the brethren. That's faith. Faith is love in action. 
It is faithfulness and loyalty. My loyalty is to Christ as to how I treat you and serve you. Hey, whether you are behaving funny or not, I will love you qualitatively as a brother or sister in Christ because I'm not loving you for you. I'm loving you because I am loyal to Christ. Jesus is loyal to the law and the prophets. So even those that stoned him, he still died for them. I'm not going to love you because you deserve it. Because he didn't love me because I deserve it. Me loving you is Jesus in me still carrying out his faithfulness in his body. Teaching good? The love work now becomes very critical because soteriology will lead to ecclesiology. Faith which worketh by love. In fact, I can submit to you that Paul's use of faith, mostly in the epistles, is for Christian living and Christian doctrine. In the entire epistles. Christian living, which obviously involves knowledge and all that in Christian doctrine. Knowledge, Christian doctrine, etc., etc. First Timothy 4 6. Pay attention. I'm beginning to round off. First Timothy 4 6. Are you enjoying this? If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. That is good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast attained. That is good doctrine. So he calls faith. That means this is Paul's observation or this is Paul's abbreviation of Christ's finished work. And his ongoing work in the church based on the sacrifice that we know. He uses a shorthand. Huh? He uses a shorthand by calling it faith. So the finished work of Christ is described as faith. That is Bible faith. Not all this crazy faith that they use today. I'm talking of Bible faith now. He says it is good doctrine or good teaching. Or it is the good explanation of Christ. So that means faith there will be the faithfulness of Christ. And also what we have believed. Because even though it is the faithfulness of Christ. It still explains what we have believed. What have I believed? I have believed his death. I have believed his burial. I have believed his resurrection. So, my believing is in his faith. Hey, are you here? If you're here, shout glory. glory. Chilling with the big boys, right? Okay. Stay with me. Stay with me, please. So, if someone acts otherwise, we say he has denied that faithfulness of Christ. That is, he is not acting like the believing one. So in his action, he is denying what Christ has done. Even though in his heart, he is saved. But his action is contrary. So that's why I say, even if we deny him by our action, what he has done is a settled matter. Am I teaching here? He cannot deny himself. Christ will not say, eh, so with all I did for you, you're still behaving funny. I changed my mind. It's a done work. He cannot deny himself. So it's primarily the faithfulness of Jesus of which our faith rests upon. And that forms the basis of Christian doctrine. That is the basis of Christian doctrine. So, if you are writing, this is the one to write. 
a narrow interpretation of faith as faith is believing to get. Believing to get. I'm believing to get a wife, get a house. I'm believing for my wife to be pregnant. I'm believing to get a visa. A narrow interpretation of faith as believing to get is totally not polite. And is totally not of Jesus at the same time. Because it becomes very, very injurious when we use faith for the centurion or faith for the woman with the issue of blood or faith for blind Bartimaeus. Then we come to the church when it is about faith and healing, which is exercised by all men. So, blind Bartimaeus' faith is not the faith of Christ. The faith of the woman with the issue of blood is not the faith of Christ. We can't teach that as faith in the church. It's injurious. Those people believed for healing and anybody saved or unsaved, wicked or unwicked, is there English like unwicked? Anybody can, Jesus son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want? Sight. Take. Whether you believe or not. You can use that faith for the believer. You understand? This is where I was coming to. I told you it's a mental shift. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for this. Hey! What are you believing for? All things are yours. The believer in Christ his faith is not forgetting things. His faith is in the faithfulness of what Jesus has done for him and how by reason of that faith, he is now serving the brethren. Are we, are we getting there? To now make it sound alike with our faith in his faithfulness, which blind Bartimaeus may not have accepted Christ. Our faith in his faithfulness, which has become the doctrine that we have believed. To make it sound alike with somebody believing for healing, they are not the same thing. Is it clear? Hello, is it clear? Yeah. Anybody can believe for healing and get it. Christ, listen. Christ will not heal you because you are saved. He will heal you because he heals. And if I meet an unbeliever right now who needs healing, I'm not going to say, have you received Christ? Before we pray for healing, receive Christ. No. What do you want healing? In the name of Jesus, be healed. And he will be healed. Because Jesus went about doing good and healing some. He healed all. Because that is in his character. See? That is in his character. He blesses the good and the bad. He gives to the thankful and the unthankful. That is the character of your father. And that is what Christ is doing in you today. The ongoing work of Christ. So the faith of the church is not the same with faith for healing. The faith of the church is faith in the faithfulness of Jesus, which forms the basis for Christian doctrine. So it, it does, so does it make sense now when Paul says to Timothy, be an example of believers in faith. That is Christian living. So if he says, fight the good fight of faith. 
First Timothy 6.12 For a preacher it will mean contend for the message. Don't compromise the message. And confront any attempt to corrupt the message. Are you here? Because in that first Timothy 6, he first of all talks about Jesus. He talks about the words of the Lord Jesus. Again, one of the things that brother Paul got from the eyewitnesses. So in other words, stay with the purpose why Jesus came. The same way he stood before Pilate. So fighting the good fight of faith is contending for the doctrine of Christ. So when Paul now says, I have fought a good fight, I have kept the faith, he is not talking about salvation. He is saying, I have kept my fidelity to the doctrine of Christ. I have kept my fidelity to his faithfulness in the message. And I stay faithful to his message. Just like he also stayed faithful to the law and the prophets. The same way he was faithful to the law and the prophets, I am faithful to the message of Christ. Are you still here? And today, he still ministers in mercy and grace to all those who believe. Once you believe, he ministers to you in mercy and grace. He reaches out to you in his love. He reaches out to you in his kindness. So our faith is based on the faithfulness of Jesus. Are you still here? So that's why the writer of Hebrews will now say, looking unto Jesus. Huh? So who is our faith? Jesus. Faith is not a mental ascent. Faith is a person. His name is Jesus. So when we say stay in faith, what we are saying is remain loyal to Christ. When we say stand fast in the faith, what we are saying is stay consistent with what Christ has done. Don't compromise it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Stay faithful to what Christ has done. Am I teaching good? Are you understanding? Yeah. Praise God. Stand on your feet, man. Glory to God. She called her by other. Is it getting clear? Are we understanding? Yeah. Say with me, I am faithful to his faithfulness. Say with me, my faith is the faith of Jesus. Say, my faith is the faith of Jesus. Say it's not a mental ascent. It is predicated on what Christ has done in his death, burial, and resurrection. My faith is as a result of the faithfulness of Jesus. If Jesus never failed, my faith never fails. Amen. Lift your hands and let's give thanks to him tonight. I want to hear your voices in thanksgiving. And let's pray in tongues as we give thanks. For he that speaketh in tongues, give it thanks very well. Kalana mambro gadanda lana mambro gadanda lada baba 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 reko sabaya kabatanga da bada grosso to bade e prata da do caro e setembre tene katamanga da bada a cotado sata pre in greto na katabanga la bada e porotoko bata e karemba taka doleka e kreto mbata na katola e kroto barakatea lota 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 e parata na bata 
Ne kodopare kapatango engrose patela katedoa arata gadea arata gadea e poropa tagande embreta kando lakaya endora tanga de boka e katapatola e krozo zobado e parenda kataga e karona kapataya alota baroka tobado e krapra tana kata e kabato barakataya e lagata mbadado e propre katona ka e kabala kata e koropeteya e kabrendo se pata e malenga robataga e krotema kataya lore pora lore pora lore pora apato beto 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 e krapra tagada gaya e prete katona kaya e ratagada e ratagada e ratagada e ratagada e parakato e kaleka bataya e krando na ba e parota na gaya aleta badoya e ratagada abata 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 ya akretona ka e kabelegra ka ambata la gaya elote boro elote boro elote boro elote boro ate bajo te baya engroto le ba engroto le ba e kabatola e rose baya e rose te pete e prata kata ka e krete kete ha e pare kata ka e lete kete e lete kete ba e prete kete e kata la kata ya e kone ba na embrete na kata Recapitolo, recapitolo, e porota na baga, e grata na gade, e grata na gade, e po na kataga, e po re kataya, e kapreta ya, e kapreta ya, e kapreta ya, e karabata, e prata gada, e krata na gada, e kabara gada, e para gata ya, e le kapata, e prata na gada, e parota na, e kataya, e kataya, e kataya, abata ya, e koto beto, e kabala ta, e prata na. Ekatanaga, ekotoba, 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 ya lebreno, lebreno, akabanoga, akabanoga, eparota, eprateka, eprateka, ekabatayo, 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 abretanaga, agaya kata, eprabreka to, eprataga da, eprataga da, ekrabranda, eparagata, ekabalaka, ekrotanaga, ekadepa, ek. Take some ten seconds. Appreciate God. Appreciate Jesus' faithfulness. That is the basis. On we standing here. Aparata. Apatagaya. Ekabalaya. 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 Ekabataga. Ekabalaya. 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 Look at that God, God, oh, a preta God, oh, a preta God, oh, a preta God, oh, a kata God, oh, a shata God, oh, a preta God, oh, a karakata. The Bible says that effectual favor, the prayer of a righteous man, it makes tremendous power available and dynamic in its workings. And so we announce a kata bata as we stand in place of prayer that faith, that tremendous power is being made available. Eka bata ga, eka bata. I to make the gospel louder. Eka tote to, a parakata. Eka bala ha, eka bala ha, eka bala ha, eka bala ha. Eka tada, eka tada, eka daba ha. For the work of ministry, eka bata, eka tada ha, eka bala da ha, eka bala ga da, eka daga da, eka bala ha, eka bala ga, eka bala ha, eka bala ga, eka bala ha, eka bala ga. A cabala, a cabaraga, a cabala, a cabala, a cabala, a shataya, a shataya, a shataya, a shataya, a shataya, a shataya, a cabata. In the book of Acts, the Bible says, when they lifted up their voice in one accord, the place was shaking. A cabataya, a cadabaya, and subsequently, the Bible declares that with great power, I gave the apostles of the resurrection. To witness the resurrection of Jesus, because great grace.
grace was upon them all. And this is the point that we have. Atakato, 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 Akatabata, a power for ministry. Atakadaha, it is in us. We bring it out. It is in us. We bring it out. It is in us. We bring it out. Apatado, 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 Apatado. You shall receive power. Ayatagaya, I have power. I can't have I make it available. I can battle for the work of ministry. A sotadea, a sotadea, a cabatolo, a cabatolo, a cabatolo, a cabatolo, a cabatolo, a catabala, a catabala, a paragada, a cabalaga, a cabalaga, a cabala, a riotoma, 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 a pitaga, a pitaga, a pitaga, a pitaga, a catolo, a cabolo, a yada. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. You too, you have been anointed. And so we say, we do ministry with great power at the total. When power is generated, it dismantles barriers and opposition. A top ataga, a tablet agata, a crop attire. We declare in the name of Jesus where there were oppositions and where there were barriers. A takapata, they come crumbling. A katabasa, a kabalahaya, they come crashing. A takatoba, a separate, a kaprata, a katabala. As we go in with Jesus Christ, a tabataga, a kabaloto, a kabaloto, the bow, a kabataga, a barriers are bowing, a kabana, oppositions are bowing, a kabana, a shakado, a shakado, a shakado, a shakado, a shakado, a shapataga, a pratagada, a kabratada, a kabaloto, a kabalaga, a kabado, a pratagado, a pratagado, a pratagado, a kataga. A Kabala, a Kabada, a Kabada, a Kabala, 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 a Katala, a Sataga, a Kabala, a Kabala, a Sakata, a Kabada, a Kabala, a Siotoba, a Pratanaga, a Prato, 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 a Prato. We do not war against flesh and blood. Eata bata, eata gata do, eata gata, eata bata ga, eata bada, eata bara gada, eata 
And that is why the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. I jump at all. They are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. A patron, a pretagon, a tita tota, a guabano, a guadabo, a guadabo, a paripon, a paripon, a tobada, a paracata, a lot of a cabretaga, a cadaba, a catola, a riato, a riato, a riato, a cadacono, a cadacono, a cadacono, a cadacono, a pataga, a pataga, a godago, a godago, a godago. Go. We see no barriers. It's a fire. A paragada. The two leaf gates have been opened. A pataga. A kapana. A pratagada. A katagada. A pratagada. A kadaba. A great and effectual has been opened. A kataga. A kapana. A yataba. A kataba. A kadaba. A pratana. A pratagada. A pratagada. A kadaba. The bow to the lordship of Jesus. Jesus, a the power to the lordship of Jesus, a Katoba Takata, a Katoba Takata, a Katoba Takata, a Tabataga, a Tabataga, a Tabataga, a Bratana, a Gotabahoya, a Cabarono, a Cabalono, a Cabalono, a Cabalono, a Grono, a Grono, a Bratona, a Cabranda, a Prataga, a Carabaga, a Beginning from Jesus, every opposition that faced him, he conquered all. He came to the apostles, they conquered. The position, they conquered barriers. Etagata, we cannot be an exception. Etagata, we walk through a troop, we live through the wall. Ekatayado, Ekayada, we are this mighty man. Eyaya, Ekadabata, Ekadabata, Ekabata, 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 Ekadaba, 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 Ekadaba. A Kataba, a Tobata, a Kataba, a Kataba, a Kraplata, a Prataga, a Prataga, a Prataga, a Prataba, a Kraplata. The word of God in my mouth cannot be hindered. The word of God in my mouth is without barrier because I have what it takes to surmount every mountain. A Yakaba, a Kataba. A tabala, a kadabala, a krabadala, a zakataga, a tabala, a kabala, a kabala, a kabala, a karabata, a kabarata, a katabata, a karabata, a tela, 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 a tebata, a tebata, a tebata, a tebata, a tebata, a tebata. In the shadows, a kabata, a pictorial representation of what we enjoy. The Bible declares he brought them out with silver and gold, and there was no one feeble person amongst that tribe. A tetata, we announce this minute every trace of sickness, we flush you out. Every trace of sickness, we flush you out. Every trace of, of weakness, we flush you out. A tetata. A Bratanaga, a Catalaga, a Sakataga, a Sakata, a Sakata. We command you to go, we command you to go. A Capatona, a Cabratanaga, a Cabarata, a Cabalata, a Cabracata, a Cabadaha, a Cabala. The Bible speaking of Jesus in the work of salvation. He says he sent his word, his word he led them, his word delivered them. From all the destruction, attack, attack. We have the healer on our inside. Attack, attack. No sickness here. Attack, attack. No weakness here. Attack, attack. No feebleness here. Attack, attack. A proper attire. Attack, attack. Attack, attack. Attack, attack. We are not in the desert. No, no, no. Attack, attack. Attack, 
are strong in the Lord, and that is the power of His might. Ekatoba, atagato, 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 ekabala, ekrebrobre, ekrebrote, ekretagade. We are not weak, but we are strong because we are well. Etagata, etabata, ekabala, atabada. Isaiah declare, has thou not heard? Have you not been told that the everlasting God he fainted not, neither is he weary of strength. He giveth power unto the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. A take a job, a parate, 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 a kabata, a kabala, a paragada. We serve sickness, a quick notice. We serve weakness, a quick notice. We serve deformity, a quick notice. We serve abnormality, a quick notice. A tapoto, a paragata. We put to flight anything. Ayakoto, ayakoto, ayakoto. Jesus will announce whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted, I shall be rooted out. A sickness is one of those. We resist the devil, we resist the devil, and we thank you, Father. He has fled in our health. We have put him to flight in our bodies. We've put him to flight. Blood of Paul will say, Thanks be to God who gave us the victory. And then he will utter, Finally, brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain things. I stand fast in continuation of the faithfulness of Jesus. I fight a good fight of faith. I maintain the reason why Jesus came. I will not give up. I will not give in. I am focused. I am unmovable. I always abound in the work of the Lord. I am unmovable. I am steadfast. I always abound in the work of the Lord. Because I know my work is not in vain things. 
love. My labor of love is not the vain things. Total. A preta gatago. A kabala. A kabrata. A preta naga. A kareketa. A kabala. A kabala. A preta gada. A kabala. A kabada. A kadaba. A kabada. I do what brother Paul will tell, will tell Timothy. If he charges Timothy in the presence of God and of men, that Timothy will be steadfast. That he will preach the word. He will be instant in season and out of season. He will reprove. He will correct. He will exalt. That same instruction is unto me. I continue. In the world, and Akabata, even the doctrine of truth, Akabata, Akabata, I stay, I reprove, I stay, I exhort, I stay, I correct with all long suffering. I get up at all, I practice on all, I practice on all, I practice at all, I come back to go, 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 I will not be distracted. No, 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 I will not be sidetracked. My face is on the ball. I borrowed all. 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 I have received focus at Agata. I walk in it at Abala. When nothing came to me, it came with focus at Agata. He said, when you do, since you continue, uh, steadfast and grounded in the faith, Ataba, Ataba, I remain steadfast. I am grounded in the faith, Atola, a Breton, a Tetoka, a Paracata, a Parapa. I am loyal to the message, Atagato, Atagato, a Katagata, a Pratoga, a Pratoga. A pratoga, a pratoga, a pratoga, a pratoga, a pratoga, a pratoga, a tabala, a pratagada, a caroba, a caloba, a caroba, a caloba, a jota, 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 a peta, a peta, a peta, a peta, a peta, a peta, a tagata, a jota, a jota, a pratagada. A carabata, a carabana, a cadaba, a cadaba, a cabala, 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 a satagada, a pratagada, a cabala, a cadagada, a socata, a socata, a sotagada. Atala kataga, ekabala tagade, ukemba talaba, angre talaka, aprata gado, esakataga, esakataga, esakataga. Ministry is prospering in my hand. Aga, abataga, ekabala tago, eprata gado. That which I have received, I am able to commit the same to faithful men. Ekabata, ekadapalo, it cannot stop with me. Etaga togo, etaga. A tagatago, a tagatago, a tagatago, a cabalo, a cabalo, a cabalo. It is the same instruction that Jesus gave unto his apostles. He said, Go and make disciples of all nations. A tagata, they went and he prospered. A catagato, a cabataga, such that in a day, 5,000 men, a pataga, were added. A tagatago, a cabata. I have received that same command. I have received that, that same commission. I declare it prospers in my hands. A tabatoba, a paracata, a cobadaga, a cobadaga, a cobadaga, a cobadaga, a cobadaga, a tabashoba, a colapon. Rakatagada, a Rakatagala, a Pratoga, a Pratoga, a Pratoga, a Pratoga, a Cabado, a Cadoca, a Tobel, a Cotabo, a Lebrata, a Lebrata, a Corapa, a Pratoga, a Candata, a Cataga, a Tagata, a Pratoga, a Cotolo, a Ya, 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 a
Before his crucifixion, he sent the seventy. They went and came back. He says, He said, The devils, the demons were subject to us in your name. They brought a victory report on how the ministry prospered. We sound the alarm on the mountain top. We sound the alarm down the valley. No soul is escaping us because it's prospering. I walk the walks of him that sent me. I make results. I make proof of my ministry. He said, I have called you, not you that have called me. That you call, that you go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit may remain. I thought that all Akabata abiding fruit, abiding progress, abiding success. Akabata in the work of ministry. I receive father. I thank you for it. I thought that all Akata 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 I am a success in the work of ministry. Nothing dies in this house. Not even ministry. Somebody pray. Go ahead, Kelebo Sakayanama, Engelebo Rokoto Beleketene Meketona Molo Dabosea, Angaba Sokola Barakata Nangala, Egebo Jakanga, Angabo Rokotonga, Agale de Bodombo, Engebo Rokotomba La Katana Kata, Egebo Jaka, Gagrada Zaka Lanabaya, Angebo Sotomba, Engelenemo Sotolia, Agaba Jokonga, Elebo Sotola, Agara Tobege, Tegeba, Agaba, Agala, Agara, 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 Agale, Shakabaya, Angelemo Sote, Babra Gadamba, Angelemo Soto, Angataba, Angataba, Elebo Shakayadaba. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Egeno nanga la tata, egebo soto tole atata, gegre de zeke gelere ba ba brada dandala da, egebo soto ange atata le atoto, be braga dambara kata, elebo zaka, elebo zaka, elebo zaka, elego zagama, endelebo sataya. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise your Father. Say with me, I am an able minister of the New Testament. I preach the word. 
I'm resilient. I'm focused. I am empowered with might by the Spirit in my inner man. I call myself faithful to the call, faithful to the assignment, faithful to the will of God. I call myself a bull laborer. I declare, I bring forth fruits. I bring forth fruits. I preach the word in and out of season. I declare the mind of God and I declare my eyes see, my ears hear, my mouth speaks. I declare by the spirit of God, I excel as I manifest the purpose, the counsel, the will of God to my generation. I declare by the mandate of God upon my life, I am a witness. Therefore, I preach Christ from continent to continent in my community. I shine the light. I shine the light. I shine the light. I shine the light. The word of God is growing mightily. The word of God is prevailing. The word of God is dominating. The word of God is rising higher and higher in my community. Men are coming to the light. Women are coming to the light. Young people are coming to the light. The elderly are coming to the light. Lord of the harvest, I ask, send laborers. Send laborers. We receive laborers. We receive laborers to the harvest. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, the harvest is ripe. We are going in to bring in the harvest. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, can I hear a powerful amen? Go ahead and celebrate this harvest. Celebrate the harvest. The fields are white. And the harvest is coming in. The harvest is coming in. Listen everybody. This year is the year of the ingathering. In gathering, we will gather the harvest in. It's the year of bringing in the harvest. Bringing in the harvest. Men are ripe. Men are ready. Men are willing. Men are open. So we shall be bringing them in. Somebody say, I put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. And I bring in the harvest. Say, I bring in the harvest. Say, I have clarity of instructions on what to do. How to go about it. To bring in the harvest. I have clarity of instructions. Where to go, where not to go, where the people are ready. By the spirit of God, I know where to put in the sickle. Where to put in the circle. The, the fields are white. I receive direction by the spirit of God to the field. Right in the field. I put in the circle and I bring in the harvest. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear a good amen. You will not just throw seed anyhow. Your seed will be directed. Somebody say, I hear you. I know we want to pray some more. We will pray some more. But we're going to get some more word. Then we stand up and pray some more. Can I have a good amen? amen. Sit down, get your pen, your notebooks, and your Bible. Let's get to work. Hit the video. Let's go. <clears throat> it's God forevermore. Following the inward witness. All right, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14. Romans, chapter 8, verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Next verse. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. This is where we got our title from. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. To be led by the Spirit is our state, is our status. That's our identification, our vital union with God. To be led means to be born or to be carried by the Spirit from darkness to light. So you're already led as a child of God you do not have a problem with leading. You already led. That's part of your DNA. You're born of God. You're led by the Spirit of God. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 9. 
But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath. Take note of the word things. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So there are things that God has prepared for them that love him. Every child of God, God has a plan for you. None of you is an accident. None of you is a misfit. God has a plan for you. God has prepared something for you. Eyes have not seen it in the Old Testament, nor ear heard it in the Old Testament. You know, what God had prepared, the things that God has prepared for you. Jeremiah says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God has plans for you. God has thoughts for you. And some people go through life without ever scratching the plan of God for their lives. What a miserable life. God has a plan for you. Within the plan of God for you is peace. Within the plan of God for you is pleasantness. Within the plan of God for you is fulfillment. In the plan of God is a purpose for your life. So there is a plan, there is a purpose, and within the purpose of God are the resources that you will require to live out that plan. Are the resources that you require to live out that plan. So look at that First Corinthians again, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Pay attention. But God hath revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. But God hath revealed. God is not going to reveal. He hath already revealed because we have leadings in God. He hath revealed them to us by his spirit. See that? So every child of God has access to the revelation of the spirit. Every child of God has access to the deep things of God. We saw three ways information comes to the natural man. Eyes, the ear gate, and the mind. The eyes, the ear, and the mind. Which is received information from external sources. Every natural man, every human being receives information from the eye gate, the ear gate, and conceives it in the mind. And what you conceive in your mind determines the outcome of your life. What you see, what you hear, you conceive. What you conceive becomes the outcome of your life. I repeat again. What you see, what you hear, you conceive. What you conceive is what your entire body will act on. Your entire body will act on the things you have seen, the things you have heard. It is outside in information. So Gloria Copeland says, we are in vital union with God. And I said that the other day. So that means what receives leading is your spirit. Your spirit receives leading. The believer has no leading problem. Because the believer is light. And in the light, you are not confused. You have leading naturally in the light. What you hear is what determines what you think. What you think determines how you feel. So your emotions are a product of your thought. Your thought is informed by what you hear. <laughs> Which means you can change your emotions. You can change your emotions by changing what you hear. A young man says, well, I have sexual desire. And he keeps telling a particular lady, when I see you, I just want to sleep with you. When I see you, I feel sexually aroused. Okay? So, what he sees is determining his conception. So he keeps telling this lady, I cannot do without you. I will die if I don't have you. Whatever it will take to get you, I will do it in my lifetime and make sure I get you. So he keeps telling the lady all kinds of stuff. And then one day, he has the opportunity to meet with this lady in a room alone. Locks the door, locks the windows and everything. He's high. Nothing can stop him. But as he pounces on this lady and takes her clothes off, he discovers he's a boy or a man. It's not a woman. It's a man that disguised as a woman and acted. And then as he looks at him, 
the whole body is full of rashes. What happens to his sexual desire? He dies. I thought he said he cannot survive if he doesn't sleep with her. So what has happened to him? A new set of facts affected his thought. His thought changed his emotions. Which means your emotions don't determine your life. Your emotions don't determine what you do. It is your information that determines what you do. Because it is your information that sets your emotion. Your feelings are not final. Something informed your feelings to feel the way they are feeling. Something. I mean you saw rashes all over the body. And you discover he's a man. All the desire jumps out through the window. Why? Because a new set of facts affected your thoughts and your thinking changed your feelings. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it and your heart there is your mind. Out of it are the issues or out of it are the influences. Another translation says out of it are the wellspring of life. Another translation says out of it flows what controls your entire life. What controls your entire life is a function of your mind. A function of your mind. You are who you are today because of what your mind conceived based on the information you received. You received an information, your mind thought over it and conceived it and gave birth to the outcome of your life. You know, the human mind sometimes is like an autopilot. In aerodynamics or in aviation, there's what they call the autopilot in modern day aircrafts. The autopilot is the automatic pilot. When pilots fly, first of all, using the manual controls, when they get to cruising level, they engage the autopilot. Once they engage the autopilot, they can stand up and leave the cockpit and even move around in the aircraft. Because there is a pilot in the aircraft that has been engaged to automatically fly the plane at a particular cruising level. Now, while the plane is flying, if the pilot discovers from the readings of the instrument that there are going to be some unusual circumstances ahead, he disengages the plane from the autopilot and uses the manual controls to navigate through the situation. And once things are stable, he engages the autopilot and the autopilot cruises the aircraft. Now, when the autopilot is cruising, if any weather condition moves the plane out of its supposed path, the autopilot quickly moves the plane back. The autopilot has been instructed no matter what to maintain that lane and maintain that cruising height. And the autopilot will not interfere with the instructions. The autopilot will see to it that the instructions given to it to navigate that plane and to fly that plane are maintained throughout the duration as long as the autopilot is cruising the plane. If there are going to be changes, the pilot will have to use disengage the automatic pilot and use manual controls now the mind is like an autopilot as, as a young man growing up in your family let's use domestic abuse for example your father keeps beating your mother and as a little boy growing up all you saw was your father abusing your mother beating your mother your mother never did anything that was good in the eyes of your father any little thing, he will either beat her, slap her, abuse her, or walk her out. Stupid woman, get out. Never was he pleased with your mother. You kept growing up as a little boy. Your tender heart kept being battered by your father's actions. Your tender heart kept being battered by your father's actions. And because of the pressure of your father's actions, after a while, your tender heart began to be strong in accepting your father's action as the norm, as the best way to treat a wife. So you grew up with that information that conceived a lifestyle for you. Now an autopilot has been programmed in your subconscious to cruise where women are concerned at that cruising altitude. 
So you get married to a woman. You are born again. You speak in tongues. You have the Holy Spirit. You are a child of God in your spirit. But in your mind, there is an automatic pilot that has been instructed and information has been fed into your subconscious that you yourself have no control over. So now, you get married, your wife comes into the house, you are happy the first day, then you start frowning. She has not done anything, you're already frowning. Any little thing she does, you slap, you beat, you abuse, you insult. It's not about your wife doing anything. It's about the programming that took place on your inside by the information you were exposed to as a young boy growing up till you grew up and that formed the outcome of your life. It's not just your wife. Any woman you meet after the first moments of pleasantries, the outcome will be the same thing. So what happens to that young man is not that the young man needs deliverance. In deliverance churches, they will now start taking him through deliverance. He doesn't need deliverance. He's already born again. What does the young man need? He needs a deprogramming and a reprogramming of his subconscious by a change of facts. Am I communicating at all? A change of facts. He needs to be exposed to a new set of facts that will help rearrange his thinking and when his thought process is corrected, his feelings towards his wife will change. Suddenly he will start appreciating. Suddenly he will start loving. Suddenly he will start being grateful. Suddenly he will start placing value because his set of facts changed by a new set of facts that are constructive and they have deprogrammed the old facts and new files have been downloaded that determine how he cruises where relationships are concerned. So ultimately, you are who you are now because of what your mind is thinking about. Your feelings today are a product of the thought going on in your mind. So that's why your life is transformed by the renewing of your mind. Some of you ladies grew up in a house where it was natural for your mother to abuse your father and insult him. Idiot, stupid man. See your head like coconut. Nonsense man. You can never think straight. Verbal abuse. And as a young girl with a tender heart, your mother's abuses began to stab your heart. In the beginning, you were uncomfortable because you love your father. But as your mother kept mounting pressure and insulting your father and abusing your father, and a few times your father had accidental discharge of anger, and you, you saw your father abusing your mother in retaliation to her actions, you began to feel like this man must be as wicked as mommy is saying because of the pressure. So as you began to grow up, you started seeing your father as a bad man. And from there, you see every man through the eyes of your father. Every man through the eyes of your father. A programming is taking place. It's not demons. This is stronger than demons. This is serious now. A programming, the main frame that makes you who you are, has been altered and battered by things you've been exposed to. And as you grow up, you grow up with that mentality. So any man that enters your life gets verbally abused. It's not just about the fact that, you know, somebody did bad. You're just used to it. You, you move among brothers. Idiot. Stupid. Don't behave like a monkey. You. you every, there's no man that escapes you. Because a daughter will improve on her mother. A son will improve on his father. It's from glory to glory. It's from glory to glory. Because sometimes you even sit down and ask yourself, what has my wife done that I'm this bitter? You can't put your finger on anything. It's a programming. It's a programming. And that programming has to be taken care of because if it is not taken care of, you will be a worst version of you. You will be a bad man. You will be the kind of man you yourself cannot live with. If they remove you and keep and they give you the opportunity to watch yourself, you will hate yourself. Same thing with the woman. You become a bad version of yourself. If they put you at a distance and you sit down to watch yourself, you will hate yourself with disdain. But because you are the one acting it, 
You are not aware that that is how you are coming at people. And you discover that people just avoid you. People don't want to relate with you. Even people that God will have used to bless you. They are afraid of you so they cannot be available. So you are an island. You become alone. You start struggling through life alone. Nobody is on your side because you have given people a negative signal. And people that should hang out with you are afraid. Because they can see that if they hang out with you, the same thing you have, you will transfer to them. Now it's important you listen to me. Because it's not a demon problem. It's a mind problem. The kind of church you attend will determine the quality of your mind. There are churches you go to, you will become a mental case. Mental case. Just because of a church. You start seeing demons where there are no demons. You'll be moving and seeing objects. you start seeing cobwebs. There's a man that used to come to me for prayer. He says, when I'm moving, I just see cobwebs. And then he by himself will be fighting things that don't exist. <laughs> On the road, he alone. And if you tell him there's no cobweb, he will tell you, but I, 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 even now, I'm feeling it. You're not spiritual. It's psychosis. Psychosis. And his church. It's his church that put it in him. Because those churches that preach demons, demons, demons on everything, demons, they make their members psychos. Your mental health is a function of your church. You can never be healthier mentally than the quality of word you are hearing. The quality of word you are hearing. All these churches where they say power, power, everything is deliverance, deliverance. They are producing societal misfits. In the name of Christians. Societal misfits. People that can't relate with others because they see witches in everybody. People that can't relate with others because they see enemy everywhere. Psychosis. People that are not normal. They are produced by many churches. And so they are complicating our problem because when these people finally get stranded and they come to us, their case takes us time because it's a, a lifetime of renewing them. Some of them, we never succeed in helping them. We never till they die. They die a vegetable life. Because the only thing that will make their life substantial, which is the word of God, which is sound mind, it has been stripped of them. And because they don't have a sound mind, they live a vegetable life. What a blessing it is for us to belong to a church like this. Where we get sound word. Where we get sound word. Where we are taught to think and think well and think productively and think right. And live in peace with our neighbors and be a blessing to people around the world. What a blessing to belong to a family like this. Where love radiates. Where everybody honors the order. Where everybody respects the order. Where everybody sees only Christ in the order. Nothing but Christ. What a blessing to have a church like this. You have no idea what many Christians are going through in the four walls of buildings called churches. And sometimes you can be so much in the comfort of the love of God and the peace of God that you think everybody is living in that kind of environment. And that's why we've got to get this word out as much as possible. We've got to get this word out as much as possible. The world is in dire need of, the, of healing. Mental healing. Emotional healing. Some say, but my problem is emotional. It is emotional because it is mental. Every emotional problem begins from the mind. It is mental. That's why it's emotional. It is psychological because it is mental. So both psychological problems, mental problems, and emotional problems are all tied to your thinking process. To how you think. If churches do their work well, psychologists will be sent out of work. There will be no psychology. There will be no need for it. Because what psychologists do is to play your mind. Psychologists don't actually help you. They only play around your mind around your mind and make you feel better that's all but they don't solve the problem because they themselves have no cure for the problem because the problem is not just psychology the only thing that can heal your mind condition is the word of god it is called the renewing of the mind and the only agent that is powerful enough to renew the mind is the word of god i don't know if i'm teaching good here 
Because even people in psychiatric hospital, after they are treated and they come back home, they, they only stop them from thinking that way. But to recover them to a place where they were before, a place of wholeness, they can't achieve it in medical science. Only the word of God can really recover a man to a place of wholeness. That's why when Jesus healed people, he tell them, go and be made whole. Because only the word of God can bring you to wholeness. When you begin to suck in the word of God, when you begin to assimilate the word of God, when you begin to chew on the word of God, the word of God is radical enough that it can steer your mind back to its default settings. In fact, it can upgrade the quality of your mind from what it used to be to what it is supposed to be. Only the word of God. Well, without shall a man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Guard your heart. When you guard your heart, you guard your life. You guard your heart, you guard your life. You guard your heart by guarding your eyes. You guard your heart by guarding your ears. You guard your heart by guarding your mind. By guarding your mind. Defeat is in the mind. Success is in the mind. Failure is in the mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. You can never live a better life than the quality of your thoughts. You can never live a more better life than the quality of your thought life. Please, this is very important. In Proverbs 25 verse 28, Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. What it actually means is, he that has no rule over his mind, your mind is exposed to everything, you're vulnerable. He says like a city that has no, no gate, no fence, no defense. You know, give me the amplified of that scripture, amplified version of that scripture. He who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. A vulnerable city. When your mind can watch anything, your mind can listen to anything, anything goes, everything you see you read, every information you watch, you can spend endless hours watching Telemundo and Z World, you can spend endless hours watching Nollywood, everything goes, you are like a city without gates. That means anybody can come in and rob you. Anybody can come in and rob you because no gate, no defense. Satan can come in and rob you. A thief can come in and rob you. Anything can cheat you because you have no protection. It means you are vulnerable to the wiles of the devil. And the Bible said be sober, be vigilant. The devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Whom you resist steadfast in the faith. Neither give place to the devil. People that become victims of pornography are people that have no borderlines. You watch all the new things. You go looking for them. You feed on them. You stay on them. You become a captive of nudity. A captive. So you are addicted. And you can no more be normal. When you are moving around, you are undressing everybody you see. You remove their clothes in your mind. You are a psycho. Your mental health has been impaired. By exposing yourself to watch things that are unhealthy for a normal human being. He that protects his mind protects his life. Guard your heart. With all diligence. Out of it are the forces, the wellspring, the influences, the issues. Out of your heart is what controls your entire life. So we began to say that we're going to look at the law of the mind. Let me go there quickly. The law of the mind. The law of the mind is meditation. Let's see how it works. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Next verse. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. 
and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Next verse. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Next verse. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Now observe the next verse 6. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. If your Bible is mine, I will underline imagine. Nothing will be restrained. I will underline restrained from what they have imagined to do. That is what God says about them. They said the, these things they have imagined to do, no one can stop them. The word imagine is the word meditate. To imagine is to meditate. This thing they are meditating upon, nobody can stop them. You meditate when information comes to you. Information is a picture transferred to you in words. Information is a picture transferred to you in words and forms a picture on your mind. Information is a picture transferred to you in words that forms a picture on your mind. Meditation and imagination forms pictures and thoughts so somebody just thought it up and it happened. And they were going to do it. Let us build a tower. Let's build a city. God said, I'm telling you, because it is in their imagination, they are unstoppable. Once your mind conceives it, nothing stops. That's why the secular world says, where there's a will, there's a way. Once your but before your mind conceives that idea, it's your eyes and your ears. So if you don't want your mind to conceive it, stop your eyes and ears from seeing and hearing. Otherwise, your mind will conceive it and you will start fighting what you cannot stop. Yeah. God said nobody can stop them. This thing they have imagined. The power of imagination, which is meditation. You know, Jewish people spend hours every day meditating. If you meet Jewish people, if you meet, that's why they are powerful because they, they do the right things. They spend hours. They don't have to be born again. If you meet a Jew, he works for hours thinking, meditating, conceiving, conceiving, conceiving. Hours upon hours. Hours. Some of us don't meditate. You know, when I was growing up, I used to talk a lot. My father would come into my room. My father can stay whole day without talking. From morning till night, you will hear my father's voice. I mean, one day he came to me and said, don't you know how to keep quiet? I was looking at my father. I wonder why he's talking to me like that. Don't you know how to keep quiet? I say, I'm sorry, sir. He said, learn to keep quiet and think. Life is more than talk. Think. As I grew over the years, I began to understand what my father was stylishly communicating to me. You've got to learn to keep quiet. Just be quiet. You talk too much. When you are talking, you are not thinking. You can't talk and think. You think first. Then as a result of the conclusion of your thoughts, you now talk. That's the talk that has meaning. People that talk too much are like shallow waters. You know shallow waters. When you get into shallow water, when you get to deep waters, you don't hear sha sha sha. You hear dum, 
doom. That's all you hear. Because it's deep. Where you hear doom, you know that that water. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a place to go. Where you shaka shaka, you say, ah, this guy is going to dance around. But where is that you the noise reducing? Doom. You say, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. When people are deep, they don't talk much. But when they say one thing, you can use a whole day to understand it. That's why they say, what an old man will say sitting down, a young boy on a tree cannot see it. Because we're talking of depth. Depth come by thoughts. Deep thoughts. As a child of God, you ought to give yourself to meditating. David said, oh how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. It is my meditation. That is the law of the mind. Meditation. Meditation. You know, people think that when something succeeds, it's of God. But that's not true. Every success is not of God. If these people were not stopped by God dividing their language, they would have succeeded, but that wouldn't have been God. So not all success is of God. Please don't ever forget that. Your imagination is very powerful. Imagination can lead you totally out of the will of God. That's why you have to consistently expose your mind to the word of God. Just like ministry. I have built a system around my life. That it is almost totally impossible for me to be out of ministry for the rest of my life. That is the way my life has been organized. There is nothing that can move me out of ministry. It's a system. It took me years to build it. So all these one people are praying, oh, Dr. Damina, please don't be discouraged. Me? Discouraged. Look, if I am sick now, the only thing that will get me out of a sick condition fast, put a crowd and give me a microphone. I will stand up. I will stand up. I'm not, I'm not joking. Ministry is my blood. It's a system I built around me where it is not possible. As a child of God, you've got to know what the plan of God is for your life and build a system around you that keeps you in that plan for the rest of your life. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. It didn't happen supernaturally that I'm in, I'm in ministry till now. No, it's not supernatural. It's deliberate. It's choice. It's not just that, oh God, God supernaturally kept Dr. Damina in ministry. Uh -uh. God doesn't keep people in ministry. People make the choice to stay in ministry. Just like God doesn't keep you in marriage, you make the choice to stay in marriage. If you choose not to stay in marriage, you'll be out of it. It's choice. So, even in your marriage, you've got to build a structure around that keeps you in that marriage for the rest of your life. It doesn't happen just because it happens. No. In fact, anything that matters to you in life, first of all, you must weed out whatever will not favor it. So, if there are friends that are not, they are not pro that purpose, weed them out. If there are things that will not favor that purpose, weed it out and build, build a gulf around you that makes it impossible for such things to cross in. And then you begin to look for things that are pro what you are doing and keep it around you. Hang around the right people. Everybody around me is ministry drunk. Everybody around me is ministry crazy. All my friends are ministry crazy. People I talk and talk with and spend time with are people that are addicted to ministry. So my whole world is ministry addicted. You know, mama loves ministry. She likes ministry. She loves ministry. She loves the word of God. So she, she, she can't even imagine me not doing ministry. So everything around me is ministry. It's ministry. It's ministry. You will never find any anti-ministry person hanging close to my direction. What is he looking for? 
What is he looking for? Everything around my life are things that facilitate marriage. You never find an anti-married person hanging out with me. For what? What do we have to discuss? What do we have to discuss? All the people I hang out with have good marriages and their people believe in the marriage institution. I don't have anybody who is anti-marriage. None of my friend abuses his wife. All my friends honor and love their wives. So where will I get the idea of abusing my wife from? I have built structures around me deliberately and intentionally that will ensure that I do what is right. It's intentional. It's an investment you make. It's an, a conscious, deliberate investment you make. Because what you keep seeing, what you keep hearing, keeps bombarding your mind and keeps influencing your feelings. Keeps influencing your feelings. And as your feelings get influenced, because feelings are not stable, if you are not careful, you start going like this. Because today I feel like this. Tomorrow I don't feel like this. Because in my head I'm thinking like this. Tomorrow I'm not thinking like this. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that man can never receive anything from the plan of God for his life. He can never receive anything from the purpose of God for his life. He can never receive anything from the resources of God for his life. So you see a man that is born of God, struggling through life, and failing in what unbelievers are succeeding in. Unbelievers without God's plan are succeeding. You with all of God's plan and resources, you're failing. Why? Because you have not yielded yourself to the revelation of the Spirit of God to show you the things that God has in plan for you. Your mind is not renewed. So because your mind is not renewed, instead of being a victor, you are a victim. You are failing because your mind is not renewed. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. You have to build a structure. So eventually, the inward witness effect, the effect of the inward witness is in your mind. Eventually, the effect of the inward witness will be seen in your mind because it is the inward witness that will influence your mind to make the decisions it makes. The inward witness. The deciding factor after the spirit of God leads you, will still be your mind. Because the spirit of God can be leading you in a direction, but your own renewed mind can resist it. Your own renewed mind can say no. The spirit of God is saying go like this. Your own renewed mind is saying, eh -eh, don't go like that, come like this. Because your mind will still be the deciding factor. Because if it is up to your spirit, even unbelievers who walk in the plan of God, if it is up to your spirit, even unbelievers walk in the plan of God. But because it's up to your mind, your mind ultimately will say yes or no to whatever God is saying. There are principles in God's word we need to put to work. Are you getting blessed in the service? God said, the picture these people have, if I don't stop that picture, nothing can stop it. Now, it took a lot for all of them to agree on one thought pattern. I hope you know that. They must have been kept in classrooms. They must have been discipled. They must have been taught. All of them in little, little groups. The idea must have been communicated persuasively. They must have been shown the benefit. They must have, there must have been an engagement. Where these people were too taught for their mind to come and agree on one idea. Training, meditation, teaching, answering questions is investment that brings people to agree on an idea. It's investment. Even politically, you are a politician, you want to win election, you don't just stand up and win election. You don't just stand up and win election. Why? Because you need people to agree with your plan. You need people to agree with your ideology. You need people to see you as their governor or local government chairman or something so you start going and consulting groups you start consulting groups you start talking to different groups across the board you start convincing them you start giving you give them money you give them things as a foretaste of what will happen when you become their leader 
You keep giving. Why do you give when you are consulting people for, for a position in politics? That is the only way they have an idea that when you are there, you be generous. If you don't give, they look at you as a stingy man. He wants us. This man that cannot even buy drink. Can't even buy common pure water. He wants us. Support what? Support what? Not support what? Support what? So it takes training. It takes mobilization. It takes engaging. It takes a lot to get an entire community to agree on an idea that they are ready to die for. Remember God said all of these people they have agreed on one thing. Nothing can stop them. That means they are ready to die for it. That is a mobilization that takes a lot of resources and time. Now, there are some people, no matter how much you pray for them, they will never follow the plan of God. They will never. They are very stubborn. They will never follow the plan of God. They will tell you, I will do what I want to do. Nobody can stop me. What I want to do, I will do. They have made up their mind. And the spirit of God does not strive with man. So the spirit of God will let you go. But you see, you determine what you want to do. But you don't control the outcome. You don't control the outcome of it. That is why following the will of God has, has no substitute. It's ultimate. Following the will of God is final. There are some people that believe totally that the only way they can get better life is abroad. Abroad. Anything you tell them about Nigeria, <laughs> they just smile. Abroad. Abroad. So because their mind is thinking abroad, they become useless locally. They can't see opportunities. They can't have idea because their mind is locked. Their mind has shut down. So if abroad does not come, they live miserably in Nigeria as parasites and liabilities. Parasites. Because all they are thinking is Canada, Australia, Europe, Europe, Germany, not Germany, 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 abroad. I know myself, I was created to live abroad. There are people like that. So, they become useless. One year, two years, five years, they are dreaming abroad. They go for visa six times. They even arrested them one time. Because when they told them, you may go out, the studio saying, what are you talking about? So they rang the police, carried the man, took him out. He still wants to go abroad. Even police have stopped you. You are still forcing your way. And God won't stop you. But you start, you know, you start procuring injuries. You start wounding yourself. You start hurting yourself. You start being unhappy. You start feeling life is not fair. No, you are the one that is not fair to life. For a believer, leaving your country, li listen carefully. For a believer, leaving your country to another country must be for the gospel. Because that's the only basis on which the Bible allows you to travel out of your country. Except you are not a child of God. The only reason why in the Bible a man must leave his country to another is for the gospel. Go into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel. So the only reason why I must leave Nigeria to another country, I know you will go for PhD. I know you will go for masters. But in the heart of God, the main thing that took you there is the gospel. Of course, you can do PhD, you can do masters, you can do other things. But the core reason, the core reason in God's plan for you for going to another nation is for the preaching of the gospel. A lot of people travel abroad and come back and wasted five years. They got nobody born again. They discipled nobody. All the time they lived there, they ate beggars. They ate hot dog. You know, they ate uh, sandwiches. 
sandwiches can make you rich if you're not careful. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, they drank foreign drink, yogurt, Greek yogurt, intercontinental yogurt. <laughs> I say intercontinental yogurt. Why are you looking at my bush? Intercontinental yogurt. <laughs> Came back home with fresh skin and certificate. Certificate that has no employment in Nigeria. <laughs> Fine skin, certificate, no job. Queen's English. Glory to God, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no job. <laughs> For all the years you lived abroad, who did you disciple? Nobody. Who did you affect? Nobody. So in the radar of God, you went nowhere. In the radar of God, you didn't go anywhere. Because the mission of God for you to have gone to another country is to preach. Go and read the whole Bible. All over scripture, the only reason why people left their country to another was to preach. Abraham, get out of your father's house to a land I will show you and I will make you a blessing. What blessing? The blessing of the gospel. The only reason why people travel is for the gospel. Any other purpose in your mind, you have to be careful. Because the only go to all nations is to preach. Now, the law, please listen carefully. The law of the mind produces action. It produces action. Your meditation will produce your actions. Your meditation, what you're meditating on will produce, it will eventually produce your actions. In Romans chapter 7, and I'm going to round up with that in this service. Now before we get to Romans 7, meditation is imagination. Meditation is not memorizing scriptures. You can memorize the whole Bible and you don't know anything. Meditation is not memorizing scriptures. Meditation is imagination. That's why you can memorize scriptures and not do them. When you are meditating, you have pictures and images of what you are meditating on. Meditation creates pictures in your mind. And it is what you picture by meditation that you act on. Some Christians, it's very easy to know what they are meditating on. Because when you go to the car park now and you look at their car, they have three stickers from three churches. Die by fire. It's on their car. Colorful and bright, I will get there. Another church sticker is on their car. Eh? Eh? <laughs> he has sworn to bless me. Another sticker. So it tells you that those people are church harlots. Those believers are prostitutes of churches. They are prostitutes. Somebody was watching me teach on Facebook and he got angry because I said there are prostitutes. Because he knows he is one of them. Because the only reason why I will call you a prostitute and you are angry is because I touch something that is inside you. If you are not one of them prostitutes, you will just hear it and pass because after all, it's not me. But the reason why it provokes something is because there is a prostitution something inside. So something touched something and there's a reaction. And why should you prostitute? Why should you prostitute? Why should you prostitute? God doesn't give you pastors. He puts you in a church with a pastor. God sets a shepherd over a flock, not shepherds. My sheep hear my voice, not voices. My voice. There should be one voice in your life that you hear all the time. A man that hears voices is confused. He's a psychiatric case. If you go to hospital and say, doctor, I've been hearing voices, they will look for a psychiatric doctor. Doctor in general medicine will say, you say what? You hear voices, referral. There's another doctor in a cat. 
She is a cat. We have the husband. There's another doctor in a cat. He is the expert on this matter. Go to a cat. Tell him I sent you. They are all they are telling is that you are no more a normal person. You are a psycho. Because no normal person hears voices. Normal people hear voice. A Christian that is hearing voices. Today you hear fall and die. Tomorrow you hear die by fire. Another tomorrow you hear love your enemies. Pray for those that love you. Another tomorrow you hear all those that have put a pipe in my spirit. Siphoning my blessing. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? When a Christian is like that, he is a spiritual prostitute. What is prostitution? A woman that cannot stay with one man that is moving around. That's prostitution. That mobility spirit. <laughs> mobility spirit you keep mobilizing around when you see his life his life is like that he will have numerous friends from different tribes under the sun <laughs> friends from different tribes tribes I'm not talking about tribes I'm talking about churches every church is a tribe that's why you don't marry outside your tribe you marry inside your tribe a word is enough for the wise Go around and be married from another tribe. You bring their culture. You bring their lifestyle. Then we have to start on learning to relearn. And you have to be patient. But when you marry your tribe, you start flowing. The word is enough for the wise. So you've got to fix your mind on the word. Revelation is not much information. Revelation is the depth of the information you have. Gathering information is not spiritual growth. <laughs> Gathering information everywhere is not spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is the depth of the information you have. This one I am teaching you. How much depth do you have of understanding of it? That's spiritual growth. Now look at what Paul says in Romans 7, 19. Listen carefully, oh, if you miss this one, you shouldn't have come to church. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Next verse. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Brother Paul is making an illustration here. Go ahead. Next verse. I find then a law that when I will do good, evil is present with me. Next verse. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind I'm bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Brother Paul is saying that the law of sin begins to war against the law of my imagination. The law of sin. So, sin will first of all put your imagination into captivity. That's how that law works. Sin will first of all put your imagination into captivity before a man begins to produce action. See that? Sin will first of all put your imagination into captivity before a man begins to produce action. So, sin will produce it first of all in words. Sin will produce its thoughts in words. Then from words it will form your thoughts. Then from thinking it will produce your actions. In words, in thoughts, then in action. That is how sin works. So what some people call instinct is not instinct. It's actually a product of their imagination. 
if you have had wrong relationships here, you know you trusted your instincts initially. You know? People that have had wrong relationships, they trusted their instincts initially. You know, you enter the relationship by instinct. My instincts are telling me that this girl will be a good woman. Good wife material. You know good wife material? All of that doesn't make you a good wife. What makes you a good wife is character. Character. That is why an educated girl can be pushed out by an illiterate woman and she will marry her husband. You went to university with PhD, yet a local girl from the village married your husband before your wedding date. It's not witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. You have been talking to him like a boss. So can't you take the box and keep it in? When you see me, can't you help me? You know, when they have too much English, they want to give instruction. When a woman has too much English, the next thing is to pass it instruction. So can't you clean my feet? Not my legs, my feet. So a village girl will come and say, ah, welcome, sir, welcome, sir. She collect box. Please sit down. She wash his leg. The man will say, ah, this one better pass that one. <laughs> if I want to hear English, I will go to class for lectures. But if I come house, I want woman to wash my leg. Nah, mo go see your family. My sister, I will see you later. Nah, mo could go, mo could go. So you see, illiterate girl call her husband from grammatical woman. You know, I can't wash plates. I just fix my nails. Wash it for me. Local woman go wash plate, wash spoon, wash kitchen, wash ground, wash body, wash hair, wash you all. <laughs> What the man they look for? I beg just to wash me so that I can be clean for the world. <laughs> character. <laughs> Don't play with character. Oh. Bible says beauty is vain. But a woman that fears God, that's character, that's conduct, she shall be praised. So brother Paul is talking about a law that is warring against the law of his members. And he establishes that law as a law that begins from words, into thoughts and once those words arrest your thought it fights against the law of your members once your thought is arrested your body follows whether you want it or you don't want it you just be doing it you see i don't want to do it but you're just doing it why you have introduced a superseding law in your members from words that graduated to thoughts and once it is conceived the next thing is action. That's why you're doing something you don't want to do. You're apologizing, but you're still doing it. I'm sorry, but you're still doing it. Because your mind is a captive by words that brought conception in your thoughts. Now, I'm closing this. Until, if you're not careful, you'll be there following instinct until your instincts are extinct. You know, some people have a view of who they will marry and where they have to live. And where they don't want to live. They have a view. The kind of woman I must marry must be like this. Must be like this. But they are not following the word of God. They are just following their carnal desires. See? Some people are just moved by sight. Wow, I must marry her. Moved by sight. It's not wrong to have an imagination. But you see, because the information in your mind is received. It's not trustworthy. It is received. From what you see and what you hear. Which is limited. Because you can only see what is available now. You can't see the invisible. So that information received is not trustworthy. The way you feel will be different if you hear something else. You can't trust your, your imagination and information. You can't trust all of that. It's like some people will say. That, that is my man of God. That man of God is my man of God. Then somebody tells them a very serious story about him. They say, ah, ah, no, no. I didn't say he's my man of God. I say he's a man of God. They change their mind immediately because they had an information that is different from what they were thinking and their feelings towards the man of God changed. It changed. A new set of facts changes emotions. Especially if you pay attention to it. 
The realm of feelings and the realm of emotions are the realm of the devil. That is the devil operates within that realm. Feeling and emotions. Feeling and emotions. So we need to walk on what comes to our mind. Listen. I'm closing. You know, the spirit of God without anything we see or hear gives us inward direction. Okay? And most times, what the spirit of God will say to us will contradict what we see and hear. That is why it's a wall. So, I saw evidence, I had it, and I can touch it. But the spirit of God told me, no, it is not. For me to live what I have already touched and seen and rely on what I have not seen is where the war is. I have done my due diligence on a business. I'm about to invest. Then the spirit of God in me goes, mm -mm. but I have all my facts. Mm -mm. It doesn't sit. For me to live what I am seeing as profit in one month, and follow the leading is where the war is. You see that? So that is why if you spend more time on the word of God, the word of God will make it easy for you to make decisions by the spirit than by what you see and hear. And that is why as a church, we give ourselves to the teaching of God's word. We give ourselves to meditate the word. We live by the word. We don't have drama here. How many of you have seen that? We don't have drama here. We have teaching here. We have the word of God. Because that's the only way I can shape your lives. There's no other way for me to shape your lives. If I throw you on the ground and keep throwing you on the ground, when the challenges of life miss you, will you lie down? It's a question. Will you lie down? You won't lie down. You will need to say something. If you don't know it, how will you live? So our aim here is to teach you, equip you, train you, produce in you, a consciousness of God's word to live by. So that deliberately you can decide to live the kind of life God wants you to live. You're not going to live a life that you are not sure of. Uh -uh. You carve it by the word of God. You use the word of God to follow the plan that God has. You design the kind of life you want to live in accordance with God's plan for you. That only comes by teaching and training and spiritual growth. Can somebody say good amen? amen. Are you blessed? I said, are you blessed? Tell me I take control of my thoughts by controlling what I see, what I hear. I refuse to be vulnerable to any kind of information. I select what to see, what to hear. I give myself to meditation. I meditate the word of God. By meditation, I alter wrong files, wrong information, a wrong lifestyle. I alter it by meditation. I give myself to meditate God's word every day. For hours, I ponder the word until the word of God defines my reality. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Stand on your feet wherever you are. Are you blessed in this service? You are what you are because of what you eat. What you eat has to do with what you see and what you hear. What you see, what you hear, determines what you conceive. What you conceive determines your action. Your action defines the outcome of your life. I have made up my mind never to give my ears to any useless thing to occupy my thoughts. I will not let any useless information pass through my mind. No ways. Before I give you my ears to talk to me, I must be sure you and the word of God are in tandem. Because the only thing permitted to permeate my mental environment is the word of God. The word of God has hid in my heart. I keep it and I guard my heart. How do I guard my heart? I guard my ears. I guard my eyes.
Thanks. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lift up your voice and begin to give him thanks. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the realm of the spirit. Rabagada leboroto shakataya. Lebra sata lebro shoko lodo bosha. Mebra zika lando robo shakataya. Lebra sakata labarata keteba. Janto lobro soko lodo bo. Rabagada legebra gaziga ladabaya. Somebody lift up your voice and begin to pray. Jabra saka ladabaradabaya. Thanking him for what you just heard. Rando shaka brado zagada. Embrazo gede la bragada baya. Ragodo shaka ta lege bradaba. Ege brando shaka taya. Lebra soko rodo bodo bodo. Man brado bam brado zadende lebo rodo. Jagada la barata zegedea. Rikoto zabadada daya. Rikwate ke babataya. Rikoto jabra tanda la Bada ege barada zegede lebrada da rikwate kebrado sataya ra 